So somebody does something wrong. Did they mean it or was it an accident? That decision about whether they meant to do it is really important in terms of interacting with other people. And it's something that they study here at the Department of Brain and Cognitive Sciences at MIT, where I'm gonna to talk to researcher Leanne Young about the part of the brain that helps us decide whether somebody meant something or not, and what happens if you use a machine to turn that part of the brain off. So this here is the, the TMS machine, and uh, what you see right over here is a figure eight coil, and this is the TMS coil, and TMS stands for transcranial magnetic stimulation. So this is an electromagnet? Yeah, exactly. So there's a magnetic field running through like such, such that we can apply an electric current to specific regions of your brain. So how do I know what someone else is thinking when I'm talking to them? Okay. so. There's a part of the brain that's a patch of cortex right above and behind the right ear. Right so here. Right here? Yep, exactly. It's the right temporoparietal junction, or, or TPJ for short. And this brain region is recruited whenever we're thinking about other people's mental states. And that includes other people's thoughts, beliefs, desires, intentions, and so on. And this information is obviously critical when we're trying to make predictions about other people's future behavior, when we're trying to explain what other people have already done. And I think most interestingly, to me at least, is that we need this information when we're making moral judgments of other people's behavior, when we're evaluating people's actions to determine whether they meant to do something, whether they're good or bad people, whether we want to be friends with them, and so on. I've definitely had conversations with people who have trouble with this. You've actually done work that looks at the part of the brain that helps us or, or causes it, depending on how you look at it, and what happens when you turn it off, right? Yeah, exactly. So some of the earlier work that we did was functional neuroimaging work looking at how this brain region was recruited when people are making moral judgments of other people's behavior. And what we found was that activity in this specific brain region is actually predictive of the kind of moral judgment that people make. So you can actually see somebody deciding that someone didn't mean it? <laughs> exactly, yeah. So if you take a look at this brain region, you'll find that its activity is greater when people forgive other people for causing harms by accident. And that tells us that what people are doing when they're forgiving accidents is taking into account the fact that the agent had an innocent intention. And that shows up in the brain, in, in the activity in this particular brain region. So it's not a what someone did region, it's a why they did it. Kind of, yeah. It's a, it's a what was going on in their head when they did what they did or when they didn't do what we thought they were going to do. And so if you take cases where what's going on in here is mismatched with what's going on out here, then you can actually study the separate contributions of, say, intentions versus outcomes or observable actions uh, to moral judgments of that behavior. And you can actually cause that mismatch in the lab, right? Yeah. So how would this actually work if, if, we were, if you were to do it to me, what right, would we do? Right, right. So I would turn you around and okay. I'd be standing right behind you as such. You'd have your chin on the chin rest. Like this? Exactly. Okay. And if I were targeting the brain region that we're interested in studying, then I would put this coil right above and behind your right ear, like so. And you would hear a clicking sound every time I applied stimulation and you would also feel a tapping sensation like that. Not too loud and not too hard, uh, but I would warn you ahead of time. And all the while you would be reading a series of moral scenarios, and after each one of those you would be making moral judgments on a seven point scale from forbidden to permissible. And as you turned it on, presumably my judgments would change? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's the idea. <laughs> it's kind of weird. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is weird. Morality is weird. So you can actually change someone's reaction by zapping a piece of their brain. It's, it's kind of like temporary brain damage, right? Yeah, exactly. We call them virtual lesions. So TMS allows us to produce a virtual lesion in, again, that part of the brain that helps us understand other people's mental states, like their beliefs and intentions. If you were to do this to me, and I knew why you were trying to change my moral judgment, would it work? Like, how would it work? <laughs> I don't, you know, I don't think so. And I think part of the reason has to do with the fact that morality is very complicated, very complex, depends on, again, lots of different factors, lots of influences. And so this should be a source of comfort to you and me that you have, you have some sort of control over the kind of moral judgments that you make. And 
it's not just that you're given over to the power of this magnet, that in fact you can rely on abstract explicit reasoning and other sorts of controlled cognition and indeed other parts of your brain that might be filling in, helping you to determine other people's beliefs and intentions to make that kind of moral judgment. So if you were to do this to somebody against their will, they'd be able to resist it. They'd be able to know, uh, no, I shouldn't be thinking this because they knew what the scenario was. I think so. I, I think that if people knew the hypothesis of the experiment, they would certainly be able to stick to their guns and make the kind of moral judgment that they would be making under normal circumstances. Oh, that's comforting, I guess. It sure is. <laughs> Thanks. Yep.